They say size doesn't matter. So today we'll have a look at this minuscule Hotten, the very creatively named Delta Printer Mini Hotten. It was announced last year with promises of being able to reach up to 700 degrees Celsius and printing super reliably with a one-piece heat break, heater and nozzle element. And all that for, quote, around 20 to 30 US dollars once it's available. Well, shall we see how many of those claims made it out of the prototyping stage? And while this is a very compact hot end, especially when compared to the big boys like the E3D V6 or even the Printabot Ubis 13, it is still a very real hot end for very real use. So basically, that means a mostly metal construction with only one bit of insulation made from PTFE, but that one doesn't get quite up to the full set temperature, so Delta Printer rate the entire thing for 270 degrees Celsius. And I'd say it would be fit for a good bit more if you replace that sleeving with some glass fiber. Which is not even close to 700 degrees Celsius and just barely enough to print the easiest of polycarbonate filaments. It's got a new generation Semitech thermistor, which is pretty much the exact same thing as the old ones, but with a new name, as well as a 25mm fan on its aluminum heatsink. So the next part is what makes this hot and special, and that's the heater, it's a custom-made cylindrical unit with an integrated heat break instead of the usual three-part assembly from a heat break, aluminum block and a heater cartridge. So what's cool about this solution, first off, is that it's incredibly compact and light of course, but it also heats up incredibly quickly. For comparison, the V6 heats up with about 2 to 3 degrees per second. The Delta Printer Mini hardened with a solid 10, so basically it will go from completely cold to completely hot and stable in less than 30 seconds. It also means that with such little mass it will cool down super fast and that combination would make it extremely well suited for dual extruder setups where you actually let the hot end you're not currently using cool down to stop oozing and then need to heat it back up when you're re-engaging it. So, Instead of that being a long waiting process, it's just a few seconds added onto each extruder swap. Now, on the flip side, it also means that the filament itself will cool down the heater much more than on a more substantial hot end, and that makes printing at higher extrusion rates more difficult. Granted, it's not an issue with any speeds you'd normally use, I believe, because temperature drops are gradual enough there for the PID control loop to take care of it fast enough. But when experimenting with just pushing the filament through by hand, I was observing a full 10 degree drop from the nominal 215 degrees Celsius just after a few centimeters of filament, while an Ether DV5 didn't show any discernible drop. Granted, the thermistor placement is vastly different between these, so temperature fluctuations at the nozzle are smoothed out by the bigger aluminum block, but you could also feel that the Delta Printer Mini Hotten was basically solidly jammed until the temperature recovered, while the E3D did get hard to push, but didn't seize up completely. In my case, the usable limit for the Mini with PLA at 250 degrees Celsius was around 70 mm per second with 0.3 mm layers and the stock 0.4 mm nozzle. Again, this isn't an issue in day-to-day -day use where you're printing with more reasonable layer heights, but I still think it's worth mentioning since this is the first hot end I'm looking at with this sort of uh, an ultra compact heater. So about that thermistor placement, the Delta Printer Mini has the thermistor mounted right in the hexagonal part of the nozzle. What's interesting here is, while it does insulate the thermistor's legs with glass fiber sleeving, the only thing actually holding it in place is the elastic sock around the heater. It does take the same fiddling as with the V6's thermistor to get it and the sleeving seated well, but once it's in there, it's just a matter of holding it in place and sliding the sock over. Plus, it comes pre-assembled, so unless you end up swapping the nozzle, there's a good chance you'll never have to bother with it anyways. Moving on, the brass nozzle itself is screwed directly into the heater unit using a fine pitch thread, which makes it incompatible with any existing nozzles, but Delta Printer are planning on making finer or abrasion resistant nozzles available. So for testing it, what better machine to use than, of course, my Delta Printer, the Cerberus Reborn. I'll have a video on this one up soon-ish, 
and I designed it with a modular effector that takes just three screws to replace the entire hardened and sensor parts. So what would make the most sense for mounting the Delta Printer Mini hardened would be just to use the M3 threads on top, which I did, but you can use the threads on the side that are used for the fan on the opposite side as well. The ones on the top just barely clear those screws from the fan, but do end up fitting. So in either case, all you need is a planar surface to mount it to, and I actually like this sort of mount much better than the groove mount style, which is a relic from the days the cold end of a hot end was still machined from a solid high temperature polymer block instead of being an aluminum heatsink. So with that in there and the PID loop auto-tuned, it was time to look into print quality. Well, actually there's not much to talk about. You know, the best things are those that just work. Geometry wise, it's a very unexciting hardened. It's got roughly the same layout as most other all metal hardens when it comes to the cold, transition and hot zones. The nozzle design is fairly standard, but because it doesn't have that large aluminum block, it's easier to get to your prints with a part cooling fan and you're also reducing the heat that is radiated away from the block and potentially into your print. And that's good for any sort of filament you might want to print. So in my case, ABS, PLA and PET in the form of E3D's Edge printed perfectly. There was nothing I could find to complain about other than slicing mistakes and machine inaccuracies. So in that regard, the hardening is getting full points. So one more thing to cover is price. Is it around 20 to 30 US dollars? Nope. But still, at a regular 59 US dollars plus shipping and tax where applicable, it fits in fairly well. Of course, now that the fine Englishmen have nuked the value of the British pound into oblivion, the Delta Printer Mini Hardin doesn't have that much of an edge over E3D, you know, but if you look at what you're getting and want a solid, compact, light hardin, then the Mini is going to be right up your alley. Of course, it does break compatibility with anything I know of that came before it when it comes to mounting and nozzle choices, but the first one of those is pretty easy to figure out and the latter is what it looks like going to be solved by Delta Printer themselves. All right, so those are my impressions of the Delta Printer Mini Harden. Not quite what we were promised, but still pretty solid. There's one more thing I would like to point you at this week, and that's a giveaway with 3D Printer Chat. The 3D Printing Nerd Joey Telling, Daniel Noray, and Anton Monson. And you can win a One How Duplicator i3 at the link in the video description. I'd really appreciate your opinion in the comments on this sort of giveaway and of course on the hot end we just had a look at. So thanks for watching, here's the usual things I say at the end of the video, like and share if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want more and check out my Patreon page with sweet rewards like one-on-one Q&A sessions. That's about it, see you in the next one.